Uh, can I ask you a question, Mr. Peterson? Yes, sir. Um, what is your fascination with the uh, word amazing? Um, it's interesting to me how people think and what they say and how they see things. And to me, it's amazing. Okay. Yeah. I, think, I, I, gathered, I gathered that from you. I couldn't tell if it was cynical initially, right. but, uh, but there's a part of your personality that seems to be uh, in, uh, authentically fascinated with life and people. I so, am, yeah, 100%. Absolutely. Yeah, that's a that's an amazing observation. That is totally yes. what it's about. Absolutely. <laughs> well, thank you for coming on. Oh, it's a privilege and an honor to be here. Thank you. Absolutely. Okay. All right. Uh, audio is good, Bill. Welcome to the Father State. I am Jesse Lee Peterson. Thank you so much for being with me. Remember that the Father State is on Patreon. So click the link, Patreon link in the description to support our work. And Mama Mia, gracious. I thank you for that. Very interesting guest today, Shaka Almos. And he is a research specialist in ancient Egyptian history. He is also the founder of the Nile Valley Movement. Shaka, thank you for coming on. I appreciate it. Thank you for having me. It's an honor and a privilege, and I mean that genuinely and authentically. Thank you, brother. I totally appreciate that. The Nile Valley Movement. So, like, you're walking down the road one day, huh. and a red apple fell from the tree. Okay. And you thought, let me do the Nile Valley Movement. <laughs> what is the Nile Valley Movement exactly? Well, the the red apple scenario that you used has put me in an, in an Isaac Newton mood. <laughs> so, uh... <laughs> Uh, so uh, <laughs> let's talk about the gravity, if you will, of uh, the Nile Valley Movement as briefly as possibly uh, yes. be done. Um, the Nile Valley Movement was born out of a concern of my own uh, because of my own unique cultural background. It was born out of a concern of maintaining and perpetuating, advancing, and preserving a black image of Nile Valley civilization, not limited to, but particularly ancient Egypt. And that what and so initially it was basically just uh, designed to advance media that would do that because we don't often see, actually virtually never do we see um, that uh, uh, authentic black image of ancient Egypt. Uh, it unfortunately is, uh, to use a colloquial term, it's whitewashed in media. And so what you get is um, a false image of what ancient Egypt would have actually looked like uh, from a demographic perspective. So ancient uh, Egypt. Yes. Was it American black or just dark skinned people? They were Africans, they were black Africans the same people that American Blacks descend from. And uh, what is your proof that American Blacks descended from ancient Egypt? Or well, the claim, the, the, claim, the claim is not that American Blacks descend from ancient Egypt. The claim is that, uh, or the fact actually is, is that ancient Egypt was an African civilization and it was no less African than any other African civilization uh, that would have existed in antiquity in Africa, whether it was West Africa, East Africa, or South Africa. Uh, the way we see Africa today, uh, those, were not, those were not the demographics in Africa in ancient times. And so uh, the claim is not that African-Americans descend from ancient Egypt, but if you need that connection, if you need a Nile Valley connection uh, to uh, West Africans, then I would suggest that you brush up on the migratory history of ancient Africa. People often think of Africa or ancient Africans as being very static, all localized in one place without taking into account the documentation that clearly establishes that there were Nile Valley migrations to West Africa 
uh, particularly after the Roman incursion into North Africa. M many of the blacks in North Africa left North Africa and they migrated into the inner body of Africa. And that includes West Africa, not just West Africa, but unfortunately the way people are miseducated today, they're under the false impression that the Sahara was empty and that the only people in the Sahara were light-skinned, miscegenated North Africans, and that's false. Uh, if you ever want to, I would just suggest that you Google the term Kanem Bornu, K-A-N-E-M, Kanem Bornu, B-O-R-N-U, the Kanem Bornu state. It was a black African civilization. And it basically comprised all of the Sahara from the north to the south of it and was directly adjacent to Egypt. If you spit in Kanem Bornu, it would land in Egypt. So what people tend to do through um, modern uh, 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 Western uh, politics, to, to give it a nice name, they create this imaginary boundary uh, and they use these imaginary uh, Eurocentric terms like sub-Saharan Africa. And th these are very modern ideas. They don't apply to antiquity or ancient Africa. So uh, not only do they, not only were there successive migrations from Egypt into the inner body of Africa that uh, eventually culminated in a West African locale, but they actually know the roots. They know, they literally know the roots and the stopping points that they took. And these are documented. Who knows this? Who knows this? Yeah. Uh, well, uh, people who study history, people who study migratory history of ancient, uh, of, of various continents, but particularly Africa. So if you study, so I'll give you, if you want a text to read, a good book. Yeah, you know, give me a short, uh, because this is okay, so yeah. much it's making my hair hurt. Okay, no, <laughs> no problem. And I'll I'm, give you I'm black and slow, so I totally don't understand any of what you just said. Well, hey, said. don't worry about it. I'm black and three times as slow. So, you know, <laughs> I, that's why I, I, I told a friend of mine the other day, I was like, oh, hell yeah, I could definitely learn from Jesse Peterson. I, I learned from anyone. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So um, uh, the text to read is a book called um, Exiled Egyptians, Heart of Africa. Now, the key thing that you need to know about this book, where it talks about these uh, migrations, and it's not the only text, but it happens to be my favorite text that highlights these migrations. The thing that's important to remember about that text is that it's not written by a black person. So it's not a black person that's cheerleading uh, migrations out of the Nile Valley into West Africa. It's actually written by a modern Egyptian national by the name of Mustafa Gadala, who uh, graduated from Cairo University, born and raised in Egypt. So this is not ethnic cheerleading or some imaginary ethnic cheerleading being uh, promulgated by African-Americans. So this is literally from a modern Egyptian national who is promulgating this. And then you have other people who were born and raised in Egypt that also have written literature. Uh, Robert Bouval is, is another one. Let me ask you uh, this. Sure. Let me ask you this. Black people in America, at least, don't normally read. They don't research. They're just... And not all, not all, but most, right? They are followers and not individuals. And so they don't research for themselves, knowing all what you just said. Yes. How you expect to get that information into them when they don't even care about that kind of stuff? Because it's so much, and they're definitely not going to read Unless you put it on TV and make it a comedy or something, they're not going to even pay attention to it. So how no, you, how, <laughs> oh, you know black people don't read all that. What the? They don't feel like even thinking about that. How you expect to help them when they don't care? They are not. They don't research. Okay, so what I try to do is I try my best to not cater to or subscribe to tropes. Um, I think you said uh, tropes. Tropes, um, uh, caricatures of people that stereotype, oh. right? And I think that, I think because when we do that, uh, we're missing an opportunity to actually accomplish what you just finished talking about, which is getting the information to the people. Uh, a large part of it, a large part of it has to do with, um, there's so many things, it's a very, comp there, there are very complex reasons why black people are the way that they are, but, 
or the way that we are. I try to, I try to, <laughs> I try to be careful with my pronouns, you know? Um, <laughs> yeah, I really do. So, because people be like, why are you talking about they? You're one of us and I, I am. Know, so, I, I hear I, that a lot. I'm conscious of, I'm, yeah, but you know something? And they want something, you to be a part of the mess. Well, you know what? We are a part of the mess. And I think that- I'm not a we, part of the mess. I actually, used to be a part. Are, actually, no, you are a part of the mess. I'm, uh, share, I'm gonna share something with you. Uh, by- separating ourselves what we end up doing is we end up taking an elitist attitude towards our own people but that's and, not how i think though i just think the blacks are messed up because they're so brainwashed and demoralized and brainwashed and government control people control they just don't know what they're doing and at one time i believed in the so-called the lies from the civil rights movement so-called right. civil and so I know what it is to be brainwashed like that, but I right. overcame it. And most right. black people would never overcome it. I don't know. So See, that's why I don't know how you're going to help them with all this information, man. I don't know. I, I sometimes wonder what kind of company you keep and where you go, because <laughs> the majority of the black people that I know, um, believe it or not, they are extremely educated. Uh, I mean, extremely. They're neurosurgeons. But they're they are dumber than the non-educated people. The, the educated black people that yeah. you're talking about? Yeah. Um, I wouldn't say that they were dumber than the non-educated black people. I would say that they have their own particular set of issues and challenges. But then everyone does. I yeah. mean, there are as many white people who are messed up as there are black people. You think I so? Think what, oh, no question about it. In fact, more. There are more white people that are messed up than black people. You know what I'm saying? I see wrong with white people that they're weak. They are afraid to be honest with the black folks and tell them the truth to free them up, free the blacks up. But other um, than that, they seem to be Desi, okay. Desi, they're afraid to be honest, not just with black people, they're afraid to be honest with themselves. So this is what I mean about everybody's messed up. I don't pick and choose. I'm, I'm an equal opportunity hater. I'm not, I don't just <laughs> dump on black people. I shit on everybody, black, you, white, you does, Chinese, you do what? everybody. I shit on everybody. Did you say S? Oh, I'm sorry. Can you, are we allowed, we're not allowed to use profanity. No, that's fine. Right. No, 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 that's fine. Oh. No, no, okay, I just yeah. didn't understand what you're saying. So okay, yeah. back, back to how all this information is going to help them right. when they don't really read, they don't research, they don't really care. But why are you promulgating that? Because you don't know what people do. You know, I'll give you an example. Last night I was watching an interview uh, with uh, some black women. Uh, I'm not particularly fans of theirs. But one of the one of the women was a female actress uh, by the name of Lisa Ray. She's pretty popular and well known. Oh, I know who that and, is. Right. But the thing that I was surprised is that during her video, behind her was an incredibly beautiful personal library. And because I don't know her and I've never met her, my assumption is what I see on the surface. And I have to constantly remind myself: until you know someone, you can't say what they do or don't do. So I just try not to judge people until I get to know them. Then when I get to know them, then I can say, well, this is my assessment of them, rather than running around caricaturizing and making generalizations about many people that I don't know. Well, I'm I looking at their what, action. I can't say what most black people do I'm or don't I'm looking at their action yeah. over the last, I've been on Earth 72 years now, and over right. the last 60 years or so, right. black people have gotten worse. They're followers and not leaders. They're beggars and takers and not workers and givers. And so I, I see them in action, and I also see how they're being pulled by the so-called upper blacks and the government and stuff. They're just, they're like... But anyway, I want to ask you, what has this now valid valley movement and all the stuff you mentioned about uh, Egypt done for you personally? Oh, that's a very good question. I wasn't even sure that you would ask me something like that. Um, well, the first thing that it did was it afforded me something that you place great value on. It afforded me uh, a different view of, it afforded me a different worldview so that I, so that my mind would not be incarcerated in the mess that you speak to. And I'm not negating that that mess exists. But that's what ancient Egypt did for me, the study of it. It availed me to a wider body of knowledge. It, um, it 
put a lot of things on planet Earth in a historical context for me so that I could locate myself in present time and, and understand my relationship to everything and everything else's relationship to me as an individual and to us as a group. I will tell you one thing that I think you would find interesting, uh, Jesse, and I couldn't wait to talk to you about this. <laughs> I, said, oh, I said, this is gonna blow his mind, probably. <laughs> I said, I'm not even know blow his mind, I just wanna see what his reaction is gonna be. So the thing that fascinates me, that fascinates me the most about black America and white America is what I call the forbidden conversation, right? So people like to pretend that there's a conversation or a discourse going on between black America and white America. There is no real conversation going on between black America and white America because in order for that to happen, both sides are gonna to have to be very honest. And the one thing that I've discovered studying history for the 30 years that I've been studying it is that all cultures, not just some cultures or one culture, but all cultures have a very peculiar way of dealing with historical shame. All cultures, Africa, European, and Asian, they all, and others, Hispanic, doesn't matter. All cultures have a very peculiar way of dealing with shame. And it's that peculiar way of dealing with shame on a cultural and a historical level and on a racial level that keeps us from having a very honest discourse and conversation. So what makes me sad is that the real conversation will probably not be had in your lifetime, Jesse. And I'll tell you why. why you that? know why? why? For a very simple reason. Because people would have to admit certain things that they don't want to admit. And I'll give you an example. Uh, I teach a course uh, called, you can go to my website, shakamos.com. I, I teach a course called Black Masters, White Slaves. Now, when you hear that, um, when you hear that title, Black Masters, White Slaves, what comes to mind to you? That is unfortunate that the white people are allowing these blacks <laughs> to enslave them in their own country. Okay, America well, what would you was say? founded, built by white people, right. and now the radical blacks are enslaving them in their own country. Okay, so the problem with that assessment that America was built by white people, if America was built by white people, there would have been no need to go get slaves. So we're going to just dismiss that. Well, they need some there. workers, man. Right. But, but you say in building. Building requires physical activity. So if you're going to say who built what, you have to include those people who made the contribution to but the But they, they, it wasn't like black people came to America and, and volunteered to do it. They, well, whether they volunteered so, or not, they the, did it. The white they, people said they that, volunteered or not, they did it. The white people said to the blacks, okay, I need a worker. You looking for a job? Yeah. And the blacks said, yes, sir. And so they went, they said, okay, the way I'll pay you is that you can live on my land. I will feed you. I will house you. And once in a while, I'll throw in a few bucks so you can buy some. Uh, oh, you're talking about sharecropping. Okay. Uh, buy yeah. some, uh, some. That's some, not slavery. That's sharecropping. Some wine. So I understand that. And so, right. but let me ask you now, this. Jesse, before you go on, I want to share something with you very briefly. Um, I'm not, I just want to really put this out there. I'm, I'm not one of these young spring chickens, right? So um, I spent my childhood in the South like you spent your childhood How in the South. How old are you? I, I don't, I, I try not to divulge that. I'm, a, I'm older than I look. You don't tell your <laughs> age? But, uh, sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. Depends the mood that I'm in. Why but let me share this with you. you. What? No. Okay, I'll share this with you. I'll share this with you. When I was born, Linda B. Johnson was president. Okay, so there you go. So you're like right? 80. Okay, and there you go. I'm about 85. <laughs> okay, so that's my point. So and I, so that's why I really enjoy speaking with you because I, in many respects I relate to you. And one of the things that a lot of people would probably be disconcerted about when it comes to me, because they see me as Mr. Super Pro Black, Mr. You know, Africa, Africa. Yeah, and yeah. In, 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 some, in, certain, in many contexts, I am. But the reality of it is that um, there are a number of positions that you hold that I actually agree with. So um, unfortunately, you and I will not be at odds about everything. But I think about uh, some fundamental things, we will certainly definitively be at um, pure odds. Amazing. Yeah, absolutely. So yeah. let me ask, uh, are there black people that look like you that lives in uh, Egypt? Uh, today, right now. In, in, in Upper Egypt, yes. In Upper Egypt, yes. But, and probably but, all over Egypt. But, yeah, but the most of the people Egypt. that live there and, and run the country yes. are, are, are non-looking black. They look more like... Uh, 
a la Uagba people or... <laughs> Oh. Tell me when you say that, Allah <laughs> Uagba people. And hey, you got to stop for it. I got to share something with you. You do realize that Allah was originally, well, not originally, but at some point in his evolution, Allah was the God of the Christians. You do realize that, right? No, I don't. Yeah, see, that's what I mean. See, people, when you I don't know people, where you get that from. Well, here, here's the thing. Uh, Allah can, hated the Christians. Jesse, Jesse, hold on one second. Just hold on one second, okay? Um, you can't teach what you don't know. That's number one. Right. Most people, right. So most people, not just African Americans. Most people are historically illiterate. You are historically illiterate. I know that because I listen to you when you speak. Yeah, I'm and, slow and, and black. It, I'm black and slow. On, but, hold on, but it has nothing to do with your color. That's why I said all. Most people are historically. If I was illiterate. white, I wouldn't be slow, buddy. That's not true. There are many, many slow white people. Take I never word, met one. I know them. Let me share something. I have a lot of white friends. My best friend happens to be white. All right, so, which is the trope that people use. But my my look, my best friend is a white Harvard graduate from Don't Maine. Don't say that loud, right? man. You're so into the African I've thing. I've said it. I've Black said it people many are gonna times. hang you. They're gonna no, string no, you up. No, talking no, about you no, got a white friend. We, no, let me share something with you. Um, Black people who are who are uh, integrated. In, into themselves, they don't have any issue with white people. They have issues with injustice and they have issues with inequity. That, and, and, they, and they have issues with black people, yeah. and like yeah. you do. So that's why I don't think that you're, you know, look, a lot of what you do is, uh, it's marketing, it's attention getting, and, and I get it. But right? I'm not um, thinking that way though. I'm trying to wake up the people. I want black people to be free again. But he, I, I believe that, but here's the thing though. You can't, if you, if you are going to cancel out your message by virtue of the way you're delivering it, then you may end up doing more injury than harm. And so you won't accomplish your goal. So I'll give you an example, walking around wearing t-shirts saying white history month, but then speaking in a denigrating way about black history month, that's going to kill your message. It's gonna make you look hypocritical. Nobody wants to listen to a hypocrite. Uh, and one of the questions that your um, producer uh, said I would be asked was, what was my history with Christianity? I grew up in a church. I was a Christian. Yeah. There was a period in my life where I did accept uh, Jesus Christ. But let me tell you, I want to get to that, but okay. I'm looking at the clock and I want to get okay. to that. I you have know. so many questions for you. Sure um, this, uh, oh, about the discussion that white and black people want to have. White people right. want to have a discussion with blacks about slavery, about this phony idea of racism and everything. But no, the, <laughs> black people are so hooked on this idea of racism that right. once you try to tell them the truth, they're going right. to use the word racism and the whole discussion is over because white people know that they're not responsible for the condition of blacks. Blacks are the con responsible for their own condition and white people want to say that Right. But they know there's not a legitimate uh, uh, discussion. A legitimate discussion will happen because blacks are so hateful toward white people. And they have been getting away with this word for racism forever now. And so the white people don't even... Jesse, I got to stop White you. people who are do, alive Jesse, today Jesse, have nothing to do Jesse, with black... One thing I'm not going to Let do, Let me just Jesse. finish that. White people who are alive today has nothing to do with the condition of the blacks. Right. And so blacks are unwilling to have a fair and real discussion. Okay. So here's the problem. There is inequity in your conversation. You keep speaking about how hateful black people are towards white people. Yes. And the issue with that is that you are, um, you are basically advancing an image that is, uh, it, it belies the actual facts. And the actual fact is that the, the 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 hatred is mutual. It's not one way. It's a mutual no. dislike and hatred. It, it certainly is. No, it's not. It absolutely it's really is. not. It is. But here's the thing. You, it's it's, it's unfair. really really not. It is. I know that it is because no, I live in it, America. I live in the same country you live in. It's really so, really not. It's an illusion it to is. think it that. It certainly is. No, you here it is. If you make a conscious choice not to see it, so here's the no, thing. No, right? I can see what's going on, man. No, no. Okay, Jesse, here's the thing. The hatred is mutual. It doesn't require for you to agree with it. It doesn't require for anyone on your staff to agree with it. The hatred is mutual. That is, and, and, and by depicting it, by depicting it as being one way, you are gonna be part of the problem and not part of the solution. Rather than saying, hey, look, here's a list of reasons why, or here's a list of grievances from both sides. 
Here's a list of grievances from white people, why they strongly dislike black people. Here's a list of grievances from black people, why they strongly dislike white people. But and then you sit down and then you sit down and you have an honest discussion about it. The point that I'm making to you and to your show and to your audience is that no one on either side is prepared to have a real conversation about race. And here's the thing. You cannot have that race. White people you, want to have a real hold conversation. On, hold on. Hold on. You cannot have that discussion divorced from history. It is impossible. No, it's you not. Cannot what? No. You cannot have that discussion divorced from history. And I'll tell you why. Because people are walking around with racial illusions and racial delusions in their mind. That includes you. That includes your staff. No. That includes people that follow me. One second. That includes people that follow me. <laughs> that includes people that follow um, uh, people like Farrakhan and everyone else. When you are historically illiterate, everybody in the room is a fucking idiot. And that's what it comes down to. <laughs> it takes people who actually know history to put people on the same page. So that's when you need that. So that's when you need to start asking the right questions. Let me ask yeah, you, you this. What did you, hold on, Jesse, you said a moment ago, you said that the people in Egypt today don't look black, right? Right. So let me ask the you a question. The ones that are ruling Egypt Right. And, and so, yes, you so do have you. some black looking folks live on there, over there, but right. they ain't doing nothing. Well, let They're me just ask you back looking at the Egyptians making the country great in the same but way the are, blacks those, are doing over here, man. But the blacks in Egypt are Egyptians. So when you say the Egyptians, you're saying the, the, the Egyptians are making the country look great. The one but that yeah, don't look like y'all. Uh, you mean the one that don't look like us? Yeah, what about you guys. The one that don't look you, like us? What? What about the ones that don't look like us? They're the one making uh, Egypt great. They're okay, the one so I'm that, asking you. So I'm asking you a question. My question to you is: Why is it that those people who are running the country in Egypt, why is it that they don't look like us? Because they they are the original Egyptian, and, and that's where you're wrong. That's what I mean. But let me tell you, I got to move on. No. No, no, okay, no. one second before you move on. I don't want you to give your audience misinformation. You just said that they're the original one. I, I, I've seen it them before. I know Egyptians. They, you got it backwards. They are not the original ones. They are descendants of those who are not the people who created the state of Egypt. The so state they're lying Egypt. too? Yes, they are. So the, the white people, people lying, the Egyptians lying, the Jews are lying. Everybody that's doing great are lying about the blacks. But that's the way history works. History so why is blacks by... don't do better if they're so smart right. and they believe they're the head of everything? Why don't we see them doing better? They're destroying. They're not building anything. Well, um... Aha! Uh -huh. One second. Hold on one second. This is not an aha moment. <laughs> uh, 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 uh... First of all, you say that they're not building anything. They're destroying. Look okay. what they're doing what to America. Is... Look what they're doing to Egypt and everywhere. Let me ask you a question. Hold on. Blacks in Egypt are destroying Egypt? Yeah, meaning the that they ain't Egypt. doing nothing over there. Just sitting back looking at the Egyptians, working hard and doing their thing. Why right. aren't blacks doing better if they're so smart? You said, why aren't blacks doing better if they're so, so smart? Yes. Okay. Doing better by whose terms and whose standards? By their own turn or by the country that they live in or by other people. Right. They are just they just build ghettos and they get in and they destroy white people good stuff. Okay, hold on one second. You said <laughs> black people build ghettos? Yeah. I've never seen a black person build a ghetto. Well, you've been I, in Africa I've too long seen. there. You need I've to look been, around. No, no, hold on. Look what they just did to the country. They burned <laughs> down buildings. They destroy businesses. They you know something? kill cops. I, I want to say something. They, you, you had a guest on one second, you had a guest on the other day. And I don't know if it was the other day, because I watched your show a few of them just to get right. to know you a little bit better. I didn't want to prejudge you. And one of your guests was a Jewish professor who grew up in Lebanon. And I really enjoyed the interview. But the one thing that I noticed about the interview is that you interact differently with different guests. You afforded him a certain level of respect and a certain level of deference that I don't see you give to other guests. Other guests you don't take seriously. You will um, insult their intelligence and you won't, you'll basically disrespect the discourse. And I think that that's unfair, right? And so I think that the same type of respect that you afforded him and that you extended to him, 
I think that you should extend that to all your guests because your audience will be the richer for it. You allowed him uh, a graceful measure of time in which to respond to your questions so that people could really be informed. So he described the experience of the Jews in Lebanon and how they were at a disadvantage because of their numbers, right? And so if you look at, um, if you look at, uh, 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 but Black, you know what it is? America. Some people go like they talk too long. I'm running out of time. Okay, no, I, I respect that. And, I respect and so that. But if not, you look but at I the feel black the people same, in America, but I have no resentment or anger toward any of my guests or anyone, right? And okay. so it's just you deal with different personalities and okay. you have different okay. conversations. I can respect that. I can respect that. Yeah. I can respect that. So with my personality, if you ask me a question, what I want to do is I want to try to be the reason I don't rush to answers, especially when somebody's asking me a question like what you asked me about black people, why aren't we doing better? Right. right. The reason I don't rush to the answer, and you notice your first initial reaction because I said, uh uh, was aha. Uh -huh. The reason I the reason I hesitated is because when I answer questions like that, I want to be as responsible as possible. I don't want to just say the first thing that comes out of my well, mind. Well, don't take too because long because thing, time okay, no, I respect by. that. No, I respect that. The um uh, uh, if you say the first thing that comes to your mind, there's a really good chance that you may be wrong and you may answer emotionally and it may be a reactive, a so, reactionary answer. As so what was the first thing answer. came to your mind when I asked, why don't, if they so smart, the blacks, why don't they do right. better? Um, I think, honestly, uh, it's a combination of a number of things. It's not just any one thing. I think it's a combination of a number of things. What's the you primary know, thing? What's the primary uh, reason? I think the primary thing is um uh -huh. I want to say I want to hold on hold on I want <laughs> to say instinctively I want to say racism. Yep. Okay? Instinctive. Hold on, instinctively. But there is because there is a part of my mind that is historically informed and I would say that it has to do with certain things about ourselves that we have not yet confronted. And that's why I said earlier, neither side wants to have an honest conversation. There are certain things about black history and African history that black people will refuse to talk about. They will, because it doesn't make us look good, right? And so it's a lot easier to say white people, white people, white people, white people, white people. And I'm saying, wait a minute. I'm not saying that white people have not played a part in our uh, uh, dysfunction. But until you are willing to have an honest conversation about our own history, divorced from white people, our own, before white people even showed up, we had certain issues. And until we discuss that, those issues are going to continue to plague us and they are going to continue to play out, whether it's white people that are dominating us, whether it's Asian people that are dominating us, or whether it's Latin people that are dominating us. You first have to get your own historical house in order. Each and individual. Black, well, not just in, as a collective and as because individual. Because unless you know yourself, you're not ever be of any good to anyone else. But let me ask you this. I agree with that. Yeah, let me ask you this. Um, yeah. You mentioned my white history t-shirt, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know I started White History Month, right? I'm, I don't doubt that you did. Yeah. I, and I don't have a problem with White History Month at all. And this July is... Yeah. Uh, our fifth year, I believe, of celebrating White History Month. And you right. gotta admit, doesn't July just feels white? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's named, look, it's named after a white person, Julius Caesar, so why not? And so it just feels <laughs> white, huh? <laughs> it's named after a white person, so why not? Julius Caesar. <laughs> so will you celebrate White History Month with us this year? Yeah, sure, no problem. Okay, good. Yeah. So I gotta ask you. Oh, no, you might not like the history that I bring up. Because they had their, their history is just as ugly as everyone else's, so I'll bring it up. You know, I celebrate it with you, but I, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a real historian. I'm the real deal. I'm an, I'm the actual thing. Okay. So we're gonna talk about we're gonna talk about their actual history. Let okay? me ask you this: the yeah. Nile movement, um, the Nile Valley movement, yes, yeah, the Nile Valley movement. Yes, sir. Uh, are white people allowed to be a part of this Nile Valley movement? Um, I would think in an ancillary way, sure. They yeah. are they are so, part of it. Are they a part of it, or is it just blacks? In, in an ancillary way, yes. In a supportive and an ancillary way, yeah, sure. What do you mean I, by uh, supportive and silly way? Um, 
it's like uh, it's like in any other uh, uh, institution. Uh, different people have different roles to play, right? And so, um, like you just said before, um, if you look at the government in Egypt, right? And you said there are no black people in that government, right? So you have to ask yourself, is it because of exclusionary policies, right? And exclusionary policies don't always have to be explicit. Sometimes they can just be um, uh, uh, implicit. So right? can they, they be a know. member of the Nile Valley movement? In an ancillary? No, no, no. Can they come and join the movement? In an ancillary and in, in, a, in, and in a supportive way, yes. And so the blacks who join, are they in an ancillary and whatever movement? Certain uh, ones, certain ones, yes. Oh, certain okay. Ones, yes. Let me ask you this. You were, uh, your religion is called the Kemetic religion? Um. Or okay. like that. What's that? I, what? I don't I don't I don't particularly have a religion. So what? let me just put that out there. Well, what is the, I want to make sure I'm pronouncing this word clearly. Comedic. Comedic. And, and so what is that religion? Okay. So um that's your religion, right? I don't subscribe really to any particular religion. So but I'm uh, saying what you're doing is but, called the comedic. Okay. Well, hold on, hold on. There are some people who characterize uh uh, the uh, spiritual practices of ancient Egypt as comedic religion. What does comedic okay. mean? Comedic is a reference to the original name of the country of Egypt. Oh. The, pe the people who lived in Egypt did not call it Egypt. They called it Kemet, which means the, bla the, the black land. Okay? So um, they also called it Tameri, um, the beloved land, and they called it Tawi. The two lands. So why are you not a, since you started this stuff over here? Why aren't you? Why are you not a committed religion person? Um, you make it sound basically. bad. I'm sorry. You act like it's a bad thing. Um, I act like what's a bad thing? Committed religion. religion is a bad thing. Um, I just think that most people who practice it um misunderstand it, um, because they're not really historically informed. And so, so that's why you're not a part of it. Um. Probably so, yeah. So if I'm they not, don't understand it, why don't you be a part to help them understand it? Um, it's just simply um, I, I'm just a solo kind of person, you know. Oh. I just try not to. I, I try to travel light, you know. It, it, it makes my journey that much more uh, uh, manageable, you know, rather than bog myself down by other people's ignorance. Do you? Uh, at one time, you were a Christian. You were raised a yes. Christian. Your yes. parents were Christians. Uh, uh, I would say my mother was, yes. Were you raised by your father and mother? Uh, technically speaking, yes. Were they together, husband and wife? Uh, yes, they were. And so was, who were you close to? I'm sorry? It was a nuclear family. Who were you closer to, your mother or your father? I would say both. Who were you closest to? No, you, can't, you weren't closer to both of them. No, you, can't, you cannot say that I wasn't. Uh, people are not as one-dimensional as you like to make us. You have different parts of yourself. So certain parts of, my, certain parts of me were closer to my mother. Certain parts of me were closer to my father. And so who do you get your identity from, your mother or your father? Um, to be quite honest, I would probably say that um, I, my identity would come primarily from my mother's second husband. Amazing. Yeah. Why not your yeah. father, your natural father? Um, simply because um, he was not really in a position to express himself to me uh, in terms that I needed to understand life because his education hadn't taken him that far. He was a high school graduate. He served. He's a, he was a veteran of this country, uh, honorable discharge, all of that. But his education did not allow him to express himself to me in ways that I needed to understand because of the way my mind works. And, did and your so mother my, my, mother's, my mother's second husband was able to do that. Amazing. Did you yeah. forgive your father for not doing that for you? Oh, of course. Absolutely. You no told problem. him not? Um, I never had to forgive him because I didn't hold any resentment. You said you forgave him. You said, yeah, of course. Well, well when I say forgive, um, uh, I'm presupposing that there's some... Uh, 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 some resentment. So I'm speaking in, in your context, but now that I think about it, I never really held any resentment towards him. Did so you I would, forgive I would have, him? So I'd have to say no, I didn't forgive him because I never held any resentment. Did you so forgive your mother for turning you away from him and marrying some other guy? What the? Oh, uh, well, that's a presumption on your part, which is an incorrect one. My mother did not turn me away from my father. Did in she fact, marry some even, other guy? 
allow me to say something. Allow me to say something. Um, even after my mother remarried, she always made it a rule in her home that we were never, my three siblings and I, we were never allowed to say anything disparaging about my father, my actual father. But we that doesn't mean she wasn't feeling anything. that way, though. I'm sorry? That doesn't mean she was not feeling that way. And since well, uh, we are spirit, and spirit to spirit, right. children pick up the spirit of the mother. Not what well, she says, but her spirit. Well, 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 here's the thing. The reality of it is that because you don't know her, you cannot speak to her feelings. That's off limits to you because you don't know her. Well, the so, fact she brought some other guy into you guys' life says everything. No, well, what, well, what it says to you might say something different to what it says to us. Because you're not paying attention to it. You're not paying close attention. But let me ask. I'm paying very, what I do for a living is pay close attention. What did you, why did you um, stop being a Christian? What made you give that up? Education. What do you mean by that? Educating myself about the subject matter that I was interested in. And so education caused you Can I ask you, you a to, question? Before we move on, um, did you forgive your mother? I did, absolutely. Did you forgive your father? I did. Okay, was that after they parted company when they moved? I, I read your history. So right, absolutely, company. yes. Right, so you forgave them for that? Yes. And okay, it was like, amazing. It was such a freeing up thing, too. It was wonderful. amazing. Yes, I'm, sir. Good. I, the only thing I would say to that is that I'm sorry that you had any resentment towards them to begin with. No, it's fine now. Uh, okay. Let me ask. So sure. what made you decide that, so how studying caused you to not want to be a Christian again? How, what did that have to do with being a Christian? Well, uh, it gave me a wider understanding of the literature that I was reading. Um, at the end of the day, as I try to explain to people, um, Christianity is a, just like Islam and Judaism, they're all literary religions meaning that the religion comes out of the literature. So if you don't understand the literature, then you are going to be ill-equipped to understand the narrative that you are reading and that you have invested yourself in. So huh? basically so basically, what education did was it allowed me, the most important thing it did was it allowed me to see beyond the narrative so that I could put the narrative in context and then determine for myself if this was something that I could accept as true. I understand what you just said, and you're right. There are Bible-thumper yes. Christians who only know about the intellectual knowledge of God, but they don't really know him. They have not been born of the Father because Christianity is about um, a change of heart from anger to love. Uh, salvation is of the heart, not of the intellect. And so I know what you mean. But let me ask... Um, do you believe in the order of God? Sure. And what's that order? Oh, what are wow. you doing to your lips, by the way? Uh, from speaking, uh, oh. a lot of a lot of air passes through my mouth, and yeah. so we call it that my lips get dry. And so Mine too, I too, and that's what and you I mean. I can't stand. Um, I'm just putting vitamin E on my lips. I, I just I can't stand uh, uh, cracked, dry lips. Ain't nothing uh, worse than a man on TV with ashy, dry lips. I'm sorry? Ain't nothing worse than a black man on TV <laughs> with ashy black men. <laughs> that's funny. And it's really funny because if a white man had ashy dry lips, you kind of can't tell because he's already ashy. You know, right. In, in color. So, so what's um, the order of God? So the order of God, uh, in what context? Period. Once you're born again of the Father, what what is the order of God? Wow. Um... I would say first uh, existence. Um, second would be uh, perception, and uh, third would be uh, creation. Um, in that in that order, the real order, the spiritual order of the Father is God in Christ, Christ in man, man over woman, and woman over children. Okay, well here's the thing. That's why I asked you. See, now you have to um, by default. You, uh, that's a disqualified answer because when you <laughs> asked me, when you asked me initially, I asked you in what context did you mean order? So you, what you should have responded with was 
in the biblical context because you're invoking Christ. So if you're invoking Christ as it relates to God, then you're speaking from a biblical perspective. So from a biblical perspective, that's how you process it. Because I because I don't take a biblical perspective, I process it and articulate it in the way that I did. My point is, had you not, if, if they had not deceived you by teaching you intellectually about the Father, <laughs> but, but point you to the... The, How do you think you learned about him? You learned about him intellectually. You had to read. But to, that's, an intellectual, that's an intellectual exercise and process. But before so I that really... That canceled that statement out. But let me just finish. And sure. because they, they intellectually taught you about him, it prevented you from discovering him from within, the spiritual aspect, because intellect gives you a false idea of God, of Christ and of God, right? And we have to erase all the knowledge that we know about him so we can discover the spirit of the Father, and that's what it means to be born again. I got to ask, um, sure. do you believe well, there's uh, one we're not, God? We're not going to move on for that. We're not going to move on for that. I'm going to respond to that. Okay. So in, so in response to that, um, you make a lot of presumptions, and I think that when you do that, you do yourself a disservice. What you do is you prevent yourself uh, from an opportunity to learn. That's number one. You, are, you presume that because you said something that it's correct. And that is that's that's really minor league. You you, you don't do that in um, in in substantive discourse. If we're having good conversation, what you do is you put it out there. You wait for the person to respond to see if what you said was correct, because then it shows that you're you're being genuine, right? So but I don't already know I'm correct. Well, no, well, the, well, see, that's uh, unfortunately that's an ignorant statement to say that you know you're correct. I can when see you that I'm correct, man. Well. Again, that's an that's an ignorant statement because you don't know that you're correct. <laughs> no, or, 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 I'm or, or, it, sure. or okay, or uh, uh, allow me allow me to resume what I said. We, you and I will have different standards of knowledge because if what you know I know to be wrong, then then what you have is incorrect and inaccurate information that you believe in. So unfortunately, persons such as yourself, you confuse belief with knowledge, thinking that they're synonymous and they're the same thing. They're not, the, they're same not thing. the same. It's horrible. Right. It's a big mistake to hold on to knowledge. You want to right. live by revelation, not about uh, from knowledge. But the knowledge. problem with you, the problem with you is that you confound your beliefs with knowledge. That's no, why you I say, I know. No, you no, often, no. Yeah, you have to say you no. know. Right. In order for you to know, you no. have to have facts. Right. <laughs> Right. Let me do so, this, though, because of time. I'm totally running okay, out cool. of time. Okay, cool. Absolutely. Let's go. Let's go. Uh, Let's do, it. do you believe there's one God or many gods? What would you say if I told you that black people enslaved white people first? I would say I didn't know that. That's my whole point. Remember so I'm I asking said? you, do you believe in many gods or one right. God? So I'm asking you, would it matter to you that black people enslaved white You're people You're not first? answering the question, man. Uh, but I'm asking you a question. It's a question. I'm going to answer it. It's a question that I wanted to ask you before we ran out of time. But I'll answer that once you answer my question. Okay, that's fair. Um, I believe that there is one God. One God. And yes. so you asked me if I, if you were to say white people enslaved black people first? Is that what you asked me? Yes. And, and, and you asked what would my response be? Yes. Amazing. I didn't know that. Okay. Yeah. So I want to share something with you. One of the premises that a lot of white supremacy groups have is they fear that black people will enslave them okay they they that's literally documented as one of their one of their grievances uh it's one of the reasons why they that they've expressed that they want to keep black people from political power now what i try to tell black people that is, is not true but hold on, hold on. It, it, it is true. It's white people don't true. fear I have the that black people are going to on, enslave Jesse, them. Jesse, allow me white to, people Jesse, are being Jesse, enslaved speak, because Jesse, white people Jesse, are I being speak. enslaved by the blacks Jesse, because they won't Jesse, defend was, themselves. I was, because I was articulating something. So what I was articulating is that when black people hear that, they become dismissive. And what I tell black people is don't dismiss that fear. Why? Because there is a documented history of black people enslaving white people in the distant past. In Where? Ancient times, in what in, world? In, Where? On planet Earth in ancient Egypt. Okay? So in Earth, Egypt, in Egypt ancient, white yes. people were enslaved by blacks? Yes. yes. Okay. Yes. I'll look into yes. that, but I, I got to okay. keep moving. No, not I, a problem. I just I, wanted to put that out there. I want to ask, how does your faith differ from the black Hebrew Israelites. 
Okay, well, the first thing is they have a faith. I don't necessarily have a faith. So that's one, that's first and foremost. I told you that I subscribe to uh, historical knowledge and, um, and to natural observation. Uh, science, if you will, you want to call it science, uh, just history. I'm, I'm a student of history and of the historical record. And that's what informs my knowledge of the world. So uh, the Hebrew Israelites do not. The Hebrew Israelites are what I call literary victims. They are victims of the literature that they have been uh, uh, exposed to. So they read literature that they don't understand. They are historically illiterate. And so, <laughs> and so because of that, and so because of that, they are invested in a narrative. They read the Torah. They don't know the actual history of the Torah, right? They read um, uh, uh, the Christian Old Testament. They don't know the actual history of the Christian Old Testament. And so when you're invested in a narrative in a book in which you don't know the history about, the only thing that you can be is a victim. So Hebrew Israelites are no less victims than Christians or, or Muslims. They're all, you're all literary victims. You're reading and believing and investing in literature that you don't understand. And Do you believe that black people are the uh, chosen people? When they choose themselves, sure. No, uh, uh, do you believe that they're you know, the chosen people by God? I believe that they were chosen by God to be the first expression of humanity, yes. So do you believe that they were the first on the earth and they're the chosen people? Yes, I, yes. I subscribe to the monogenetic origin of humanity, meaning that uh, humanity has a monogenetic history and that that, that history began in Africa. And that mankind has six sequences. The first three sequences were born, lived, and died in Africa. They never developed a need or the ability to leave the African continent. The last amazing. three sequences did at the Homo erectus stage. That's amazing. Are the yeah. blacks the real Jews? No. Blacks are not the real Jews? Um, I, um, I would say uh, some are. You know, some are. There are some... Uh, uh, Middle Eastern types that are the original Jews. There are some Euro there are some Eurasians. Uh, are, are you the real Jews. Jew? No, I'm not. Oh, okay, good man. I'm about to say. No, I don't subscribe Goodbye, to Israel. Judaism. What? I don't subscribe to Judaism. I don't subscribe <laughs> to Judaism. Uh, uh, black Hebrew Israelite believe that they will one day enslave the white man. Do you believe that? <laughs> I've already told you that black people enslaved white people in ancient Egypt. Do you so, believe the Hebrew Israelite will one day enslave white people? No, I don't think that they will because they're already enslaved by the literature that they read. So how can an enslaved people enslave other people? That's silly. Amazing. Are you a slut maker? I try to my best ability not to be. And if I have been in the past, I apologize to anyone that I've ever done that to. Right. And so are you a slut maker? I just answered your question. No, I mean like um, now. Then I would have to say no. Oh, okay. <laughs> Yeah. So, um, do you love the Great White Hope? No. And why not? Um, one, because I don't subscribe to that term, and uh, two, it doesn't it doesn't apply to anyone that I can think of. <laughs> Who is uh, the Great White Hope? There is no Great White Hope. Oh yeah, there's a Great White Hope. Uh, hope for what? Hope for what? We are transferring power from Washington, D.C. and giving I'm going to tell you why you, he's not the great white hope. People. I'm going to tell you why he's not the great Welcome white hope. Welcome to the great white hope, but have you, you heard of Donald Trump? Know why he's not, do you want to know why he's not the great white hope? Why? He's, uh, he's not the, you know, I actually uh, hung out in a nightclub once uh, with uh, Donald Trump. It was an interesting experience. Um, uh, well, one, because he's from Queens, New York. And there's no such thing as uh, a white person from Queens, New York, being a great white hope. It's just not going to happen. That's amazing. <laughs> I asked, I'm from I, New York, born and raised, so I know. <laughs> so did, did I ask you if you love white people? Did you ask me that? Yes. I don't think you did. Do you love white people? There are white people that I love. Uh, do I love them collectively as a whole? No, but there are white people that I do love, yeah. How can a, you love one and not love all? The same way I can love some black people and not love all black people. That's impossible. Or love some Asians. If no, that's you, impossible for you. Speak for yourself. No, if you don't Chicago. love one, you love none. That's your. That's in your worldview, which I do not subscribe to. No, so that doesn't make people. sense, man. It doesn't make sense to you. There's a whole lot of things that I would say that wouldn't make sense to you, like one plus one equals two, but we're not going to talk about that. Do you believe that God love all? 
Ooh, that's a hard one. I can't speak for God because that's that's, that's like asked, a, do that's you like believe a, that's that like he loves like all? A drop of, oh, that's like a drop of that's like a tear drop out of your eye trying to speak for the ocean. That's silly. So that's yeah. why I asked, do you believe that God loves all oh, people? Oh, do I believe that God loves all? I'm I, I, I'm I'm out to lunch on that one. I haven't determined that yet. Okay, what is the state of Black Americans today? To me, it's scary and hopeful at the same time. Meaning what? Um, it's hopeful because I believe that um, if you don't believe in yourselves, without confidence, you've already lost the race. That's in any endeavor of life. And so I made the conscious choice to believe in us as a people. Um, and that even includes you. Um, I made the conscious choice to believe in us. Do you know how many people, when you your show first contacted me two years ago and asked me to appear... Do you know how many people asked me not to do it? They were like, no, Jesse's this, Jesse's that, Jesse's this. And at first I listened to them because I already had my own idea about you prior to that. I've known about you since you were first really became high profile. And I initially had my ideas about you. Oh, he's a Sambo, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> but I try, to live, I try to live my life in a certain way. And the way that I try to live my life is don't judge anybody until you've actually spoken to them. Give them a chance. Give everybody a chance to prove you wrong. You know, so um, with black people, it's, it's, it's scary and hopeful. I'm hopeful because I watch another, I watch enough of us doing our very best to be responsible and be accountable. It's scary because I know that there are way too many of us who have chosen otherwise. And it's not just scary, but it's hurtful. Black people have been begging and blaming and, you know, and uh, victim mentality. Pretended to be victim for a long time. Yeah. They wanted welfare checks, so we gave them that. They wanted affirmative action. We gave them that. Well, let me ask you a question. They wanted they want, let, me, let me just want, finish because of time. Let me finish for time. Okay. Because of reparation, they asked for reparation. We gave them that. They wanted to lower the SAT test in order to get in white universities. We were giving them that. Uh, they wanted to graduate without earning their way, but simply because they're black, we gave them that. Where would enough be enough for them? When will enough be enough for us? Right. When will y'all say, you know what? Uh, okay, white folks, we're satisfied. Oh, I'll ask, since you're one of us, I'll ask you. You answer. What, what's your answer to the question? No, give me your you're answer first, and then I'll respond if you want me to. Okay, cool. Um, when is enough enough? Um, I would say that as long as, um, as long as anyone thinks that they can uh, get something right in the world. If you think about human nature, whether it's blacks, Jews, right? Let's look at the Holocaust, Jews after World War II. Some people, many people ask the same thing. Give me about a short that. answer for this because we're definitely running out of time. Okay, I get Where it. Where would it. enough be enough for the black? The blacks would say, you know what, white folks, thank y'all. Right. Y'all right. giving us everything we asked for. Right. We burned down your country. We did everything. Right. You let us do everything. When would the black say, okay, that's enough. We had it. Um, I don't know because I can't speak for all black people. So I just have to say, I don't know. Amazing, you know? huh? Yeah, do, do you, yeah, I don't know. Do you believe in separation of the races? Mm, it all depends on what context. Meaning that should black people and white people live apart from one another? If they choose to, if they if they choose to, yes. Do you believe in that? Do I believe in that? Yes. If I believed in that, I wouldn't live where I live. I live in the middle of Manhattan. Everybody's around me. So I, you, I would live someplace where there was only black people. So do you believe that? Uh, apparently, um, I don't. I don't. I don't know. I'd have to explore. The, the, I would have to explore um, the advantages of doing that. Amazing! Yeah. I gotta put you on the hot seat. I gotta heat this up. And put you on the hot seat. I got to put you on the hot seat. When do I get to do that? When do I get to put you on the hot seat, mister? When you have me on your show. Okay. Oh, I like that. There you go. <laughs> Listen, I, like I need you to ask me questions. Are, are, you, are you coming on my show? Are you coming on my show? I, I have to check, you yeah, know, you with, with, my, with my uh, schedule. But let me Which ask. Is, I need you sure. to answer these as quickly as possible, all right? Okay, I'll do my best at rapid fire. The hot seat. Is Rwanda a real Wakanda, a oh, real place? <laughs> Wakanda, is that a real place? Uh, uh, there are some people who say yes. I, I would say no, but there are some people who say yes. 
in one word, in one word, describe Camilla Harris. Oh, Camilla Harris? Um, I can't because I don't know her. Is it good or even to teach critical race theory in schools? Um, I personally don't subscribe to it. Um, I might subscribe to the theory, to teaching it at school. It depends at what level. Do you believe that the black woman is a queen? That black women are queens? Um, I believe that they have some queens amongst them. You believe I believe, I believe we have some queens amongst us. Not, not all black women, of course not. So you, you believe some black women are queens and others are not? Of course. Some black women are queens, some black women are not. Like some black people are um, honorable, some black people are not. Who made a more classy first lady? Big Mama Michelle Obama or Melania Tr Trump? Um, it's amazing that you refer to Melania Trump by her name, but you refer to um, uh, Michelle Obama outside of her name. No, that's I said a, Big the, Mama Michelle a, Obama. You refer to that Big Mama, but that's not her name. So but, that's what I'm talking about. That's your, that is your, your innate disrespect for black people that is um, being put on... Front Street. Who is more classy, a big mama Michelle Obama or Melania Trump? When you when you ask her name correctly, I'll answer the question with respect. When you say her name with respect, I'll answer the question. Is it ever okay to tell the woman she's fat? If she asks your opinion, yes. Would you ever live in mommy Africa permanently? My mother does. And would you ever live there permanently? It depends on where, where it is, yes. It you would on... live in Africa? It, it, it depends on where it is and under and the circumstances. Why sure. are your mama living over there? Um, my, I don't have a mama. I have a mother. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's number one. All right, I don't have a mama. I have a mother. And I refer to her as mother. Which Why is she living over there? Um, she loves it. My Her second husband, uh, we grew up with him taking her to Africa. She's been to all 53 countries. And um, she determined many, many years ago, before she retired as a school teacher, she determined many years ago that that's where she wanted to live the remainder of her life. She, she's 80 years old. She's older than you are. And um, she loves it. She lives uh, in West Africa. She has a number of homes. She has a few farms. And um, she's very, very happy. She married into the Akan people. Well, that's a beautiful life. Raised, you just want to live there. Were you born in America? I was born in Brooklyn. My so, mother was born in South Carolina. Why My don't you call yourself Indiana. American then, uh, rather than some other type of name like African or Egyptian and all that? Um, simply because I acknowledge my ancestry. Would you ever hire a person with a black name? Um, I have a question for you before I answer that. Would you ask an Italian person why they refer to themselves as Italian? They don't refer to themselves as American or Italian-American. They just say, I'm Italian. I know that because I grew up with Italians. So why do they refer to themselves as Italian and not American? But and you then, wouldn't ask them that. You I would. would. Add, oh, excuse me. No, you would not. You if would they were add. born in America, it doesn't make right. sense they call themselves Italian. -American. But so well, let me ask you, you a question. You didn't ask. You did not ask the Jewish Lebanese professor why he doesn't refer to himself as just an America. He, why do he refer to himself as a Jew? Okay. You don't ask would you that. ever hire a person with a black name? Of course. That's a silly it, question. What? We already did when they when <laughs> when they hey, look when they when they elected Barack Obama they hired him they hired somebody I know else. what a mess huh I agree with you that was a mess <laughs> well is I can say Barack is an African name is I'm Islam sorry? a religion of peace uh, I would say no no it's not globalism or nationalism <sighs> oh that was a good one you got okay that was the best question you asked so far <laughs> uh, okay I hate you for asking me that question um, <laughs> oh. I'm going to go, okay, I would say globalism in certain respects, nationalism in other respects. Amazing. Is it okay to be a black supremacist? Where it's in your interest, sure, why not? Is it okay to be a white supremacist? Where it's in your interest, I'm not going to hold it against you if that's the post that you take. It's what, human nature to do what's in your interest. What is a man? whatever he determines it to be, because if he lets somebody else determine it for him, then by virtue of that, he is not a man. What is love? Connection. Thank you, man, for uh, taking the hot seat there. Did you have fun? 
I had so much fun and I hope that you have me back because I really genuinely like you and I really appreciate your show. Yeah. And I and I have to apologize to you in some in some respect for judging who I thought you were before I actually started watching your show. Right yeah. on. Yeah. And, uh, no problem. I totally understand it. Tell the folks how to keep up with you, how they can listen to your podcast and all the other sure. stuff. Sure, just doing. go to just go to my YouTube channel. It's Shaka Amos. You should the name should be on the screen. S H A K K A dash A H M O S E. Go to the website, uh, shakaamos.com, where you can see some of the courses that I offer. You can also check out my book, Codex Game Over, where I actually show where the biblical writing actually came from. I do I do what's called a collation. I put it next to, to the ancient original Egyptian text so that I can, you know, you can see that. Um, also, uh, that book is being revised and of course is coming with it so that you, we can really go deep. So for anybody who really wants to understand the origins of Christianity and one who wants to understand the origins of the Bible and its relationship to ancient Egyptian literature, I'm the person that you want to talk to because you'll learn things that mo that no one else can really teach you and you'll be exposed to real, actual, genuine scholarship. So Shaka, that's what th I'm put out there. Thank you so much for coming on. It was amazing. Yeah. And I do appreciate it. Yeah, and uh, thank you all for tuning in. Don't forget to check out uh, the Father's Day on the Patreon. Click on the Patreon li link in the description there. Uh, visit the store on Bond as well. Great merch. And don't forget to like, follow, tweet, ring the bell, and all kinds of good stuff. I do appreciate you. Let me hear from you. And thank you again for uh, tuning in. And thank you, Shaka, for coming on. Thank you for having me. I really appreciate you. Absolutely. So. God bless Absolutely. you. You know what you remind me of? What? You remind me of that somebody's uncle who should always be at the barbecue. Because <laughs> I can't, really, because there are so many relatives that I think of. Like, I have two two Facebook accounts. One is just for my relatives. And these are like these are like the most boring people in the world. Like, they, have, they never have anything <laughs> interesting to say. At least with you there, there could be some debate. There could be some argument. <laughs> there could be some exercising of the brain. And oh, that's man. why I appreciate you. At least you have a position. At least you have an opinion. And that's what I appreciate about you. Right on, you know? man. Thank you. I appreciate that. Absolutely. Okay. Where are you? You're located in California? I am. I'm in Los Angeles. Oh, okay. When I'm out there, I'll, I'll come through and check you. Absolutely. For sure. Absolutely. So I'm going to exit now, and I think I'll look forward to hearing from Kelly. Yes, yeah? you will. Yeah, she okay, will. Okay, wonderful. Thank oh, you. I do have to say this before I go. What? Stop invoking George Floyd and the statue erected to him. I know. And what a loser, huh? No, you have to see, this is what I mean about you being a hypocrite, because you talk you talk a good Jesus, but then you speak not like Christ would speak, and that's what makes you a hypocrite, because he would not call George Floyd a loser. <laughs> what would he, he call went, him? He went to the criminals. He went to the degraded. He went to the downtrodden. Right. He went to the people who were dysfunctional. And he did not speak derisively about them the way you do, which makes you not Christ-like. No, I just say, I don't hate him. I just say he well, was I didn't a, say that you did. I, but you I just speak, say he was a drug addict. addict. He was a drug addict, unemployed drug Jesus addict. Jesus wouldn't care. But Jesus they're making a hero care. out of him. The blacks but are it, trying to use that it, as a hero. It makes you sound like you're jealous that they didn't erect the statue to you. What? And that's what oh. makes you sound like. Yes. Right. That's what I'm saying. Don't do that. Don't Amazing. do that. I appreciate yeah. that, buddy. You're better than that. You're better than that. Thank and I know you. that you're better than that. I want to lift you up. I don't want to leave you down there. I want to lift you up, Jesse, because you have a lot of potential to do a lot more than you've already done. But like I said, you can't teach what you don't know. Thank you, you know? man. I appreciate that. You should that. take a class with me. You should take a biblical class with me. You'd love it. What? No. Yeah. Go to my website, 30 minutes, or do a one-on-one, Shaka Amos and you. You'd love it. You'd learn more about the Bible in 10 minutes with me than you would 30 years in the church. That's amazing. Or a seminary or, theolo or theological. I, I got to run, Shaka. Thank you, man. I appreciate that, though, all right? Have me back. I'd love to come back. All right. Sure. Thank you. Okay. Right. Thanks for watching the Father's Day. Don't forget to like, follow, subscribe. Support my nonprofit at rebuildingtheman.com and tell everybody and their mama about the show. Mm -hmm.